So you want to know how the art, culture, and film scene evolved in Rotterdam? Well, we can't talk about that without talking about the International Film Festival of Rotterdam, IFFR. So, to sort of give you a brief history of what that was like, I've compiled a small list of facts that are important, and I'm going to tell you a bit about the story and the history of this festival, and why it is the beating heart of Rotterdam and ensures that our culture industry continues to thrive in an environment that is increasingly becoming more chaotic and more volatile for artists and musicians and all kinds of people involved in the creative space. So without further ado, this is the story of IFFR. You might be thinking, why on earth should I care? Who the hell came out of this festival? Like, I get it's important to the history of Rotterdam. I get Hubert Balls is really someone who worked really hard to get it off the ground from 17 people to now thousands and thousands of attendees. But why should I, Mr. Average Viewer, or maybe Mr. Movie Lover, care? Have you heard of Christopher Nolan? The Dark Knight Rises, maybe? Well, I think his first movie premiered here in 1998. Or Todd Haynes, director of Carol, one of the most iconic queer movies ever. Well, he had uh, his movie Safe here in 1995. So there's a lot of talent that you've come to know and love today that originated from this home. And it's funny because when we think of creativity in the Netherlands and when we think of all kinds of like media industry, we usually think of Amsterdam. But no, it's all here beating from the heart of Rotterdam because Rotterdam has always had this strong underground culture, its own strong music industry, and IFFR to keep it sustained, along with all kinds of creatives. For example, there's a huge fashion underground here that no one would also know about, and it's this all arena of creativity that keeps moving together. And that's, you can also watch my video, uh, Five Reasons I Moved to Rotterdam, I believe, which was my very first video, where I tell you even more about all kinds of creativity that exists here. And it's just so exemplary of how in the Netherlands, You've got this start of something and then it goes boom, global. And these are just the examples I could find for you guys. There are so many more examples and I actually encourage you to pop off down in the comments and be like, hey, I know this director that was at IFFR that premiered. And while you're there, maybe click the little ding ding bell and click the subscribe button for me. I'd really, really appreciate it. IFFR started on the 28th of June, 1972 as an initiative of what was called at the time the Rotterdam Arts Foundation. And did you know that the first edition had only 17 people in it? That would be hard to believe with all the busyness and the commotion, all the powerful partners and the massive behemoth IFFR has become today. It really gives you this kind of inspiration about how far you can go and, and how much you can create. And it all came very largely from one person, Hubert Balls which now has a whole fund named after him and was the director of the festival until 1988. And it is said that he was this magnetic personality who held it all together and helped it grow from its initial uh, space into this massive thing that we see today. Uh, he helped refine its focus on showcasing young, new talent as well as established artistry and helped create the welcoming creative international environment that IFR has become so well known for and was acting as a powerful glue and he's really like the father of it all and it's just so exciting to learn and see this powerful part of Rotterdam history and it creates inspiration for the impact you could leave on this city like look he left his mark why can't you maybe you start your own company maybe you start your own festival how you do that I don't know now, moving on, a few years go by, and Rotterdam Film Festival, the IFFR, starts working with Vipro. And that's when the festival goes from more of a showcase, a welcoming place, these are the things that are happening, into more of the competition format in 1995, when IFFR decides to introduce what we now know as the Tiger Award. And things become competitions for who's to watch out for, and all the stories that are very powerful and how this becomes the shape of the industry. And funnily enough, I was having a conversation with one of my colleagues because I am part of this inclusion and outreach scheme here at IFFR about the history and how that uh, defining moment 
still remains the heart of this festival as a really serious and uh, movie lover sort of festival where the tone is set about what to watch, what to not watch, and how the environment is still kept so strong and not very refined as opposed to something like Cannes or the Berlin Film Festival, which have really become more profit-oriented and star-oriented. It's really kept its mission, and you feel that within this really, really devoted audience. But it's important that it really kept its heart of championing new voices and championing new audiences, despite the fact that it did eventually become a competition. The competition did not kill the soul and the electric energy of those creatives and its commitment to highlighting all the power that young creatives have. And still, every time you walk in here, you feel that energy and that power of the international environment uh, come through you. We've talked about the past and Hubert Balls. We've talked about why you should care about IFFR, but where is it now? Well, this year, I believe they had quite a few titles that even I couldn't keep up with. And they have representation from almost every, every country in the world, including my own home country with Kira, Kira Wugin, which is like a new Egyptian movie. So there's Egyptian comedy, there's all kinds of social commentary on different things like uh, emotional repression, class, there's really something for everyone. From the limelight selection, which is really the audience favorites, to the harbor that takes the harbor of the city and the heart of its culture into account, to all kinds of unique shorts, to programming and retrospectives, there's really become something for everyone. And it's become this massive thing in Rotterdam with all kinds of sponsors and supporters, all kinds of partners, and we're most recently able to fund this inclusion and media outreach scheme so that people like me would have access to this industry. And I've talked to quite a few critics and uh, directors and people that have come here in the festival and everyone really feels its heart beating and comes back and looks forward to it every year to meet their friends, to explore new movies and to feel this connection to the art that we all create in this city and the beauty of the movies that we love. So you might be thinking, hey, IFFR maybe isn't for me. It's this elitist, bougie, whatever. But no, I'm telling you, believe me, look at the website with over, I think it was 400 titles this year. I'm sure there will be something for you next time. And maybe while you're at it, go to our local uh, film places where IFFR is held. Like, Lantan Venster or Kino. Throughout the year, they hold all kinds of creative programming that can sort of give you a taste of certain types of things you might expect from something that's a bit more focused on the alternative world and championing different kinds of voices. So yeah, uh, this was just basically a love story of film and connection. And I hope it meant something to you as much as it meant to me. And for now, if you want to find out more about Rotterdam, please feel free to check out either one of my culture shock videos or the five reasons I love or hate going to Rotterdam. We've got all of those for you. I'll see you there.